Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Apple's announcement for the brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So if you've been following my channel over the last year, you'll know that I've been testing and benchmarking games running on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And it's safe to say that we're all very excited about the M1 chip upgrade and what this means for gaming on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and other future Apple Silicon computers. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the top five features which I think are very exciting about this new chip. So firstly, I'm gonna cover the M1 Pro. So I think what people are most excited about is the improved performance of the M1 Pro compared to the original M1 chip. So this M1 Pro has eight high performance cores. So that's four more high performance cores than the original M1, and it has two high efficiency cores. So that's two fewer than the M1. And that's because these two high efficiency cores are meant to be more performant, and so only two are actually required. Furthermore, the M1 Pro has a media engine built into it, which allows the hardware acceleration of the decoding and encoding of certain codecs, including ProRes. This is going to provide much better performance for video editors, especially for those who record and edit in ProRes, because that is a very demanding codec. The M1 Pro also features a 16 core GPU. So this is more than double what we had on the M1, where we had the option of seven or eight cores. This GPU will offer more than double the performance of the original M1 chip, and it compares very favorably to integrated PC graphics and also discrete graphics from other Windows computers. And for the very first time on Apple Silicon, we're gonna be able to configure up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory. This is far better than the M1's maximum limit of 16 gigabytes of RAM, which really hampered the ability to do things like run virtual machines performantly with only half of the RAM available to the virtual machine. So number two is the surprise announcement of a second M1 chip, the M1 Max. Now this chip has the ability to be configured with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It also has 57 billion transistors, which is nearly four times the amount of the original M1 chip. This features a 10 core CPU, which is the same as the M1 Pro, but the real differentiator here is the ability to configure the M1 Max with up to 32 GPU cores, which will supposedly provide four times the GPU performance of the M1 chip, and also be very power efficient compared to other laptops and PCs. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these M1 Max chips and do proper testing of my own. If Apple's claims are anywhere close to reality, then we'll have our hands on one of the best performing laptops on the market right now. So number three is the screen. So one of the main things that people are gonna notice is that this new screen is really creeping up to the edge of the lid of this computer. And this is also reflected in the new notch as well. So this is where the webcam is kind of peeking through where the top of the screen is. This is similar to the feature of the current iPhones. However, I don't think this is the most interesting feature to me. I'm most excited about ProMotion, which is the ability for the screen to run at 120 hertz, which basically means 120 frames per second. And I'm wondering what kind of gaming possibilities will be opened up in the future. And perhaps this 120 hertz screen will become a standard also on the MacBook Air in the future as well, which will mean that games will be expected to be run at 120 frames per second in the future. These new screens also have exceptionally high resolutions and the screen itself is also extremely thin and definitely one of the thinnest screens I've ever seen. This screen is also capable of 1000 nits of sustained brightness, which is far more than the 439 nits of the original MacBook Pro M1. So number four is connectivity. Apple have done the unthinkable and they've brought back ports which we never thought we would get back. And I think that the cable that people are most excited about is MagSafe 3. So this is Apple's magnetic charging cable, which has definitely been very sorely missed. In addition to the MagSafe charger, we can still also charge from the three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. And also we have the addition of an HDMI port, a headphone jack, and also the SD card slot, which is gonna be a big relief for photographers. In addition, these new MacBook Pros allow users to connect up to three 6K resolution displays and one external display with up to 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. This is a huge improvement over the original M1 chip, which only allowed a single external display. So number five is customization. So with the original M1 chip that was released last year, all of the devices performed roughly the same way. So we had the MacBook Air, 
we had the MacBook Pro, we had the Mac Mini, and we had the iMac 24 inch. And they all used a M1 chip and they all performed roughly the same way. Some of them had passive cooling, some of them had active cooling, some only had seven GPU cores, some only had eight GPU cores, but this only resulted in a very small difference in overall performance. However, what's very interesting about the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros is the fact that we can actually configure any kind of chip configuration that we want. So if I go into the base level 14 inch now, what I can do is select any combination of CPU cores and GPU cores. So the base model here, we have eight core CPU and 14 core GPU. But if we go down to the very bottom here, we can configure this with an Apple M1 Max with the 10 core CPU and the 32 core GPU. So this is gonna take a little bit longer to arrive. And it's going to be very interesting to see that this 32 core GPU is gonna perform much better than this 14 core GPU. However, from the outside, we're just gonna see a standard 14 inch MacBook Pro. We're not gonna be able to tell exactly which performance level it's gonna have. What's interesting is that these new chips seem to be constrained more on price than on form factor. And hopefully we'll be able to see these chips or equivalent performance chips of these types integrated into the MacBook Air or the Mac Mini in the future. So anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts about whether you think that these new MacBook Pros are a good upgrade over the original M1 Max. Some people have been telling me that these new MacBook Pros are too expensive and that the original M1 chips are more than sufficient for them. Other people are really keen to see the performance boost increase, especially when it comes to gaming performance too. I've already pre-ordered my MacBook Pros. I'm gonna be doing plenty of testing, especially with games. If you have any requests for games that you'd like me to benchmark first, please leave a comment. I should be receiving my MacBook Pros in a week's time and I'll be doing plenty of testing and I'll be taking any requests that you'd like to give. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.